Hello and welcome to the second video in this series of Core Walls Design. In the last video, if you haven't checked it out already, we have looked at designing our core walls for the flexural stresses due to the bending moments and the compression stresses from our axial load on the core. With that, we've designed our tension vertical bars in the core faces and we have checked our stresses in compression in the core as well. In this video, we're going to be looking at checking the shear design and it's even simpler than the flexural and axial design we've done previously. So let's have a look at AS3600. It's fairly simple, like a concrete um, beam in shear as well. You've got a component due to the concrete and a component due to the steel and you've got a maximum shear that the wall is not going to be able to take any higher than that doesn't matter how much steel you add in the wall. So let's look first at the concrete shear capacity. You've got two situations, one when your height to length ratio is less than one and when your height to length ratio is more than one. So let's look at a couple of different situations and how we're gonna work out our height and length of the wall. Let's say we're gonna be looking at the elevation of one of the core walls over here and basically this is my wall continuing through the floor above and the floor below and this is my slab at the floor level your effective height of the wall is basically from the soffit of the slab above to the top of the slab below and it's not center to center your wall height is essentially the clear height from the floor to floor so it doesn't go from center to center it's actually from the top of the slab at the lower level floor to the soffit of the slab at the higher level floor and this is your effective height and this is essentially your effective height now the length of the wall if the wall is actually continuous through without an opening then your length is actually quite simple to work out because it is just straight away the length of that segment of the wall the problem or the complexity i should say comes in when you have for example a big opening in the wall and because of this big opening your wall is not continuous so you cannot actually take the full length of the wall in shear what you have to do conservatively is is actually you break down the wall into two segments so you can have this segment of the wall and you can have this segment of the wall and then you have the header which is designed as a beam to take the shear between the two segments of the wall. So each of these two segments should be able to withstand your design shear. So you essentially have um, LW1 and LW2, and whichever is the shorter is probably gonna be the critical one for your shear capacity anyway. So with that in mind, let's start with a simple case where we have our full length and our full height. In our core over here, we were looking at this direction. So let's take our wall length as 2.7 meters and let's take our floor height typically 2.7 meter with that in mind our height on length ratio is 2.7 meter divided by 2.7 meter which is exactly one and that is falling under case a because it's less than or equal so that means we can still use this equation so we can substitute straight away that this one is equal to one we can substitute our fc dash as uh, 40 mpa usually and we can substitute our 2.7 length and 180 thickness of the wall and if you work that out using the dimensions in millimeter for this equation, you should be getting about 1,107 kilonewton as your phi VUC. And in this case, don't forget to multiply by the safety factor, which is in this case 0 0.7, which gives me 774 kilonewton. And essentially, this means that each of these two walls is capable of withstanding 774 kilonewton in shear and since we have 600 in shear that means each of them is taking about 300 so they have a very good capacity ratio by the way if you're interested 
into going deeper into lateral loads analysis and design, as well as modeling a complete full building on the finite element analysis software called eTabs. You can check out the links in the description of the video below. There is a full course that I've prepared on Udemy and you can access it with the link below for a heavily discounted price. Now let's look at another situation where we actually introduce an opening and let's say that our door opening width is about 1.2 meter and the architect is quite good. He put the opening actually at the middle of the wall so we end up with a balanced length of the wall segment each side which is in this case 0.75 meter and 0.75 meter. So with 0.75, let's call this case one, our case two now we've got 2.7 meter divided by 0.7, which gives me a ratio that's more than one. Um, and in this case, I'm gonna have to use this equation. With using this equation, again, it's very simple substitution of the values. You should be getting something around 60.4 kilonewton. Again, that is a very small value. So let's check how much is the minimum over here. That minimum is 160 kilonewton, which means I'm going to have to use this 160 because it cannot be any less than this value anyway. Now we've got our con concrete shear capacity. And in this case, with the opening, it's actually only having 160 kilonewton. So let's look at our phi VUS, which is our steel capacity. For my steel capacity, it's again also simple to calculate for the wall where your height on length is more than one. Your PW is essentially the ratio of the horizontal reinforcement area to the cross-sectional area of the wall. And we know that in walls, in horizontal bars, you need a minimum of 0.25%, uh, which is 0 0.0025. So if we use the minimum horizontal reinforcement, let's see how much um, shear capacity we're getting with that. So our 5 VUS is going to be equal to 0 0.0025 multiplied by 500 MPA the steel grade that we are using multiplied by 0.8 our length which is 750 and our thickness which is 180. That gives us 135 kilonewton. So if we add both of them up we've got 135 from the steel and we've got 160 from the concrete. So our VU in total is 160 plus 135, which gives me 295 kilonewton. Again, don't forget to use the safety factors. And in this case, that is gonna reduce my capacity to 206 kilonewton. And that is gonna be actually, in this case, less than my capacity for shear, assuming that the shear is actually gonna be shared equally between the two walls. But in reality, since there is an opening here, this is actually less stiff and this wall might start to attract a bigger shear. So instead of going 300, 200, it could be something like 400. So instead of being 300, 300, it could be something like 400, 200. And in fact, that would actually work for my shear capacity. The only way to know for sure how much is going to be distributed between each of this leg over here, this leg over here, and this big stiff leg of the wall over here is to actually do either a stiffness analysis by hand and see based on the shear stiffness of this one, this one, and this one, how much of my shear load is gonna be distributed, or to run um, an elastic analysis using, using ETAB software and see how much shear force is going into this segment as a peer label and in this segment as a separate peer label and this segment as a third peer label and use that to design our shear in the wall. Now, if it still doesn't work in this case, one thing we can do is always increase the concrete grade because as we can see here, concrete grade actually plays an important factor in the concrete capacity or we can increase our horizontal bar more than the minimum of 0 0.0025. Either way, could work to help you get it to work. If you don't want to bother going into detailed analysis, you can straight away just increase the concrete grade or the horizontal reinforcement. Cost-wise, it's always cheaper to increase the concrete grade than increasing the reinforcement. 
So I would highly suggest going with that. As always, if you find this lecture helpful, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for future videos, and share it with someone who can benefit from this. Stay awesome and see you in the next lecture.